Um, should we talk a bit about your book? Yeah. Uh, and the thing that you are least known for, apart from being grumpy, right? Yes, the thing I'm least known for. <laughs> um, the new book is The Butt. Mm. Would you like to just tell me a, a bit about it in a nutshell? It's about um, a man called Tom Brodzinski. He's an American, but it's never actually stated that he is. Uh, he's in an unnamed country, partly based on Australia, but it's not Australia, it's sort of... Uh, and he decides to give up smoking. He's there with his family on a vacation, and he, he's standing on the balcony of these service departments they're staying in, and he smokes his last cigarette and flips the butt quite casually, unthinkingly, off the balcony, and it, it falls onto the head of an old man who's lying on the balcony below, who also is an American, but again, it's never really stated. And it burns him quite badly. And it, the sort of law, the legal system in this country is quite strange. On the one hand, you have these kind of quite draconian anti-smoking laws, uh, which include nobody being able to smoke within 16 meters of a public building, which is an actual law in Australia, I think, maybe 20 meters. And also this weird thing that there's an Aboriginal people in this country and their customary law is integrated into the civil and criminal law of the society. And it turns out that this old man, Reggie Lincoln, is married to an Aboriginal woman. And because Tom Brzezinski's cigarette passed into public space before going into the private space uh, of the old man's apartment, it's become a kind of offensive weapon. Uh, so. Poor Tom Brzezinski gets tied up in a rather kind of Kafkaesque legal case where he's obliged to go and make reparations to, to the old man's Aboriginal wife's tribe together with a, another guy called Prentice who is English, but it's never really, really said. Uh, and for various reasons, Brzezinski suspects Prentice of, of being a paedophile. Uh, and the two of them are kind of shackled together in this very unpleasant way and have to journey into the heart of this strange desert country where there turns out to be a rather vicious counterinsurgency war going on that Brzezinski, in his rather shuttered way, hasn't really paid any attention to. So that's the, the basic outline of the book. I mean, this isn't a book about smoking, I and mean, it isn't a book about kind of smoking ban. It's more about how in Western liberal democracies, uh, our conception of a commanding civic ethic is a kind of utilitarianism. It's kind of based on health policy. And uh, increasingly, our, our sense of civic morality is we almost do a kind of cost-benefit analysis collectively and say, well, you know, it's costing us more as taxpayers to, 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 to you know, pay for medical treatment for smoking-related illnesses than it will, than we get. Do you know what I mean? It's all that kind of, it's not about right, you know, what do I think is right and what do I think is wrong. It's about these kind of mass, consumer, collective, utilitarian decisions. And, it, and I think looked at from outside, it seems quite a thin and impoverished and, and uninteresting idea of social good. It's not very arousing. It's not like kind of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's not like the ownership of the means of production by the workers. I mean, it's not, it's a kind of, it's an odd, it's an odd kind of, you know, medicalized totalitarianism in a way. And, and it was really that that struck me at one level. So the book's kind of about that. But it's also about the way in which we export our morals. You know, that since 9-11, the West has been involved, or at least part of the West has been involved in this project to kind of bring liberal democracy through the barrel of a gun. Uh, and, and what could be stranger than exporting these kind of health policy morals to other countries violently? What could be a sort of, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of, to me, it's an inherently satirical notion. And I think the impact since 9-11 of you know, American and, and British foreign policy, particularly on kind of liberal people in, in Britain and, and in the States, has been to uh, make people internally di divided and quite inconsistent in their perceptions. I mean, 
I think it's too crude to say that it's kind of split the left, you know, it's split Barack Obama from Hillary Clinton and it's, you know, split old Labour from new Labour here in Britain. Or I, I think that's too crude. I think a lot of people have been split internally. And I think a lot of people's conceptions of, of what it was to be, broadly speaking, left of centre, progressive, interested in humanism, uh, in, 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 in ideas of social and economic equality, in, in the, has become very muddled and confused. Uh, and, and the kind of watershed for all of this has been Iraq. So I, I wanted to kind of express that in a different way.